propane started uh, four or five years ago. We named it after Elmer Brown. He was the first recipient. Even though he's not an Epsilon Eta member, he's not eligible, but uh, in honor of him, we did name it after him. We have Ray Yeager. We have uh, Jack McClure. We have uh, Dan Henney. And we have Bob Mellis. Tonight, we have a few more that's coming in. Uh, I'd like to read you, first of all, the qualifications, what the requirements are. Some of you are not aware of this. Must be a Kappa Sigma alumnus from the Epsilon Eta chapter of Bowling Green State University, Bowling Green, Ohio. Must be in good standing. Must have an earned bachelor's degree. Must have been graduated a minimum of 10 years. Must be endorsed by a minimum of three Epsilon Eta brothers who also meet the requirements, eligibility requirements. No active member of the selection committee may be nominated or endorsed by any other active member of the selection committee. We didn't want to have any, uh, 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 you know the word I'm trying to think of. Anyway, uh, conflicts of interest in there at all. So the selection committee was not allowed to nominate any of the election, selection committee. Nominations have to be typed in the hand selection committee by August 1st. Well, who's the selection committee? Selection committee is comprised of the Alumni Association's executive committee, the officers, and the group leaders, which constitute the entire board of directors. There are 20, some uh, very back and forth, required 60% uh, affirmative votes to become a member of the Wall of Fame. If the nominee is approved, elections will, the induction will take place at the chapter house during the university homecoming weekend following the approval. No limitations on the number of times you may be nominated. The selection committee may decline any or all nominations, and the nominee doesn't, can either be alive or deceased. The first nominee tonight And, I, and I, I have to, you do have to bear with me. Uh, Ray Yeager was to do this tonight, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, Ray was taken ill and had to go home. The first nominee is Lou, Brother Lou Fernandez. Graduated from Bowling Green, February of 51, served in the U.S. Army, 1st Infantry Division, immediately after uh, following graduation. Attended the University of Michigan after a separation from the Army. Joined Humble Pipeline Company, an assignment of the Love Oil Company in New Jersey, in Cisco, Texas, 1954. Married to Rose Marie in 1962, have two children, Louis and Lisa Marie. Continued employment with Exxon in New Orleans, Louisiana, Charlotte, North Carolina, Houston, Texas, including assignments as an employee relations manager for marketing in Memphis, Tennessee, Exxon Research and Engineering, and in New Jersey and Baton Rouge Refinery in Louisiana. Overseas assignments with Exxon include Assistant Director of Industrial Relations for, for Creo in uh, Louisiana, Salinas, uh, Venezuela, and Director of Employee Relationships in the SO Europe in London, England. Elected Vice President of Human Resources for Gulf Corporation in Pittsburgh in 1983 following merger with the with an oil company in California, was subsequently elected the vice president of Chevron Corporation in 1985, serving as director of industrial relations and environmental assignment affairs for Chevron Corporation. Retired in 1993. Formerly a member of these boards, the Golden Gate University, Arriva Juntas, Inroads, Federated Employees, National Conference of Christian and Jews, Employee, uh, European Employer Relations Council, currently serving service on United Health Care Public Policy Board of California. So your approval, Lou Fernandez to the Wall of Fame. There may be some surprises tonight. Now, Shade, would you come up, please? We're going to induct Merle Shade. 
We're sitting at the front table, and of course, Dad leaves. He doesn't want to come up, but he's on the Signal brothers, alumnus, pledges, and active. It's a great, uh, great honor to present my father. Would you come up, Merle and Nan? Both of you come up with us. I'd like to read some of my father's accomplishments, what he's done, uh, as prepared by my mother. <laughs> <laughs> I just found out that I was going to present this the other night, and I, I live in Georgia, and my uh, mother called and said, you want to do this? And I said, sure. So, uh, quite, quite nervous, so bear with me. Uh, Merlin Shade, known as Merle, graduated from Shawnee High School in Atlanta, Ohio, and attended Ohio State University in engineering for two years before joining uh, the United States Army Air Corps in World War II. He served a tour of duty on Iwo Jima in the South Pacific. Following discharge from the service, he resumed his education in PG. He joined the throng of GIs. Many of uh, many of you I know came back to that era, 46, 52, etc. And uh, he lived in huts. And for those who don't know about it, these were metal Kwanzaa huts. Somewhere on campus, they had no insulation. They had plastic windows where the snow blew in. It was so uh, people that wanted an education really had to want it at that time. Uh, it was here that he became a member of the Kappa Sigma Delta fraternity, the local. He was in the second pledge class that came through. Uh, looking out, I see a lot of the Kappa Sigma that came through with him. And that's the group I'm really most familiar with, and I'm uh, glad you're all here. Uh, served, uh, he served in many capacities for Kappa Sigma. He was nominee for president for a day. Served as Grand Master of the chapter in, I believe, what, senior year? Okay. Uh, campus activities included Emerson Literary Society, Gamma Theta Upsilon, Kappa Delta Pi, PE Club, Varsity Club, and he was a three-year letterman on the wrestling team. Uh, graduated from the University in 1949 in education, and he uh, took a teaching job in Bainworth County for two years, and he was a coach and teacher, and after that he came back uh, to BG and got his master's degree in education. He's married in 1951 to my mother. Um, <laughs> after that, they moved to Cincinnati, where uh, Dad began a teaching career at Miramont High School as an administ administrator, teacher, principal, coach. He coached football, basketball, baseball, and uh, started a wrestling program. In 1968, uh, we moved to Van Wert, or Delphus, Ohio, in Van Wert County. Where all three of my brothers and I graduated from Delphus Jefferson High School. Uh, and he served at, uh, or he's principal at Lincoln View High School as athletic director until his retirement in 18, or 1981. <laughs> <laughs> he's not that old, people. <laughs> 1841. In 1981, after 35 years in the education field. Uh, while at Lincoln View High School, he, uh, he was athletic director and again started very. Uh, successful wrestling program that's that's been his passion and we still enjoy going to wrestling tournaments together in fact next year we're going to go to ncaa's in cleveland so uh see so he was active uh, in northwest athletic conference where he was uh, president of the uh, conference uh, principals and uh, athletic directors and he served in, in, an, in an advisory capacity Following his retirement, he became active in the Retired Teachers Association where he served as president and uh, served on several other committees at the district and uh, state level. He's a member of the Masonic Lodge, Scottish Rite, North Rite, and Shriners organization. He resumed uh, his connection with Kappa Sigma fraternity when uh, we all started to enter college. And he's served as an officer of the Alumni Association for the last 10 years. He is an uh, active member of Trinity United Methodist Church in Delphus, Ohio, where he served uh, as, uh, on many committees. 
He and my mother have lived in Delvis for the past 29 years, where he now enjoys fishing, hunting, gardening, reading, and traveling, and corresponding with fellow Kappa Sig through the alumni membership. Uh, he brings uh, Kappa Sigma and Epsilon Eta, a legacy of three sons. Uh, my brother Don, who is not here tonight, uh, my brother Mark, and myself. Thank you, and AKD, AEKDB. going to get away with this. One last thing, I can give you a plaque. <laughs> no, 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 you got to take the mic. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> you served on all those things, you certainly can talk to us. <laughs> uh, to take the mic, they didn't say where to take it, so I'll... <laughs> well, really, I guess the uh, summing up everything that uh, led to this, uh, you say that uh, it's good for fun. And uh, saying that, why well, explains, uh, I guess, why I did went from one thing to another. <laughs> I was uh, having fun, and I was, uh, I guess, in a sense, being selfish. So I took on other work, which uh, added more fun. So this coming from the people that uh, nominated me and approved me, I wish to say thanks, and uh, it's a great honor, and uh, certainly I will cherish it very much. Thank you very much. Well deserved. Had the opportunity of working with me for the last 10 years. Everything that they said about him is true. Tom and Hugh, would you come up now, please? Tom and Hugh? succeeded in reducing it to six words. You might want to jot them down. In the time of your life, live. When he turned 40, he felt that everybody worked and planned to celebrate the weekend. <laughs> Boom. He created two weekends in the week. <laughs> and double the good time. <clears throat> Bert or Albert loves toys. Airplanes. Let's fly. Land. Camp under the wings. He flew to weddings. Took each of our four daughters on their first flight. Motorcycles. At first two. Russ had her own, and Bert had a big one. In fact, he's got an 850 now. Also, <clears throat> big cars. It had to be a Caddy or a Lincoln. Nothing foreign. Shirley and I were living in Boston, Massachusetts. Bert called and said he would be in need of Massachusetts, and could I pick him up? I had in my, I did, and in my uh, Ford van conversion that I had at the time. His first comment was, I like this. Two weeks later, he had a new Dodge conversion van. <laughs> he tied his van to his love of music and his love of jazz. It started to provide information to Epsilon Native brothers of jazz festivals all over the country, the time, the date, the location. And he always invited every Epsilon brother, join 
come on in, no obligation. Ragtime ricks. But smoke was over there. Okay. So he added van travels that covered the 48 states. And I mean the 48 states. <laughs> so that he always said, no obligation, and then changed it to say, bring your favorite squeeze. So <laughs> didn't have <laughs> he would say, see the sites, and you need to have them all listed when you got there. Then you would get into a bridge game, then other kind of card games, and they introduced us to dice games. Lots of laughs. I do feel they, for us in Albert, uh, they did make gas money off us. <laughs> Shirley and I joined in an Alaskan adventure. That was last year. Everybody had a ball. Now, Bert has never broken a speed law. I mean that. Never a speed law as far as driving, you follow him, and you stay a certain number of feet behind. He leads the way. He has never had a DWI. That's saying a lot for a campus. <laughs> And as you can see, as you can see, he has walked away from, from every, land, every landing he ever made. He walks, well, he's here, isn't he? Yeah. He stops everything as the sun sets. He usually has a libation and uh, looks at his partner, Rosemary, and asks, what is it all about? Bird is taking care of himself. He is a excellent host who compliments Rosemary. It is a privilege and an honor to call him brother. In addition, I truly feel he has earned a place in Epsilon's Wall of Fame. Thank you very much. Sure, Tom, that you are 100% right about this DUI business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the reason I say that, I was, my wife Joe and I have been palling around with these two for years, following them in the van. We become vanners because of these two. And we were with them one day, and a cop stopped us. And he rolled the window down, Bert rolled the window down, and said, What do you want? The policeman, sir. Would I like? I would like to see your driver's license. He said, "What for? What for? I didn't do anything." And the cop said, "You ran a red light back there, sir." He said, "I did not. That was yellow. It wasn't red." And Russ goes, "Bert, you did too. You went right through that light." <laughs> and, and Russ, there, the bird says, "Shh, shh." <laughs> and he says, "One more thing, sir." The policeman said, "Said you not wear your seatbelt." And he said, yes, I do. I always wear, and Russ said, Bert, you never wear a seatbelt. You know, you, you got to disconnect it. And he said, Russ, shut your mouth, man. And the cop stuck his head in the window, and he says to Russ, does he always talk to you like that? And he says, no, only when he's been drinking. <laughs> Is it 
<laughs> yeah, where were you going to? <laughs> right? Okay. I think Bert has something to say. He really does. <laughs> Well, brothers, brothers, spouses, friends, and hundred uh, kids. I'm not a stand-up comedian, so uh, please bear with me. This is really big stuff. Last summer, I received some letters from three of the brothers: Dave Lorenzi, Jim Pierce, and Art Lauer recommending for the uh, Wall of Honor, Prinny Arthur. Uh, you all know Prinny Arthur, uh, having been a uh, very active president of the Alumni Association for the last nine years. But let me tell you a little bit more about Prinny Arthur. Prinny started to uh, Bowling Green in uh, 1942. He spent four years in the Navy as a pharmacist making landings in about seven of the uh, South Pacific Islands, tending to the moon as a, as a uh, pharmacist mate. Prior to that, uh, Prey was raised in a very uh, conservative uh, family, his father having been a Methodist minister. His mother also played a very important part in Kappa Sigma, having been our very first Kappa Sigma a house mother from 1947 to 1952. Pretty good out of the Navy. Came back to Bowling Green in 1946. Joined Kappa Sigma Delta and uh, was initiated in Kappa Sigma when we got our national charter in 1947. If you remember the famous campus cats on campus in those days, Freddie was the original trombone player of the campus cats. 1949, Pretty marries his college sweetheart, Joe Winter. And they've been married uh, 49 happy years. They've raised five children, and uh, one of whom is a fellow Catholic. 1950, Pretty graduates with a uh, degree in music. Goes to Port Clinton, teaches school there until about 1957, at which time he decides to go into the insurance business. He becomes an agency man manager in Toledo, and uh, about that time, Bowling Green State University decides that uh, Penny should be on their development staff. So they come and got him. Uh, Function there on the uh, development staff. His fame spread all the way to Florida. When the University of Tampa came up and got him and made him director of development at the University in Tampa. He eventually went back to the insurance business. He retired in 1999 as a senior vice president. <laughs> 1991. <laughs> and retired as senior vice president of his company. He retired in uh, North Carolina. And what a great place to retire. However, Pretty decided he was returned to Ohio. A lot of the brothers were retired, retiring in Ohio, and he thought he'd be nice, it would be nice to come back to Ohio, being near the fraternity and uh, the other brothers who had retired here. So much for a thumbnail sketch of Pretty Arthur. Some other things you might be interested in. In the 1940s, a really big event was held at Bowling Green every year. It's called the Big May Sig. And Prince stood up in the fraternity meeting one night and he says, we're going to join the May Sig. This is where the fraternities would compete with one another for a trophy. Imagine the reaction. All these guys had been in service for four years fighting the war. They were going to sing. No, I don't think so, Pretty. <laughs> Fearless leader Pretty Arthur prevailed, and he broke us up into four part harmony. And we sang. It was sissy stuff, but we sang anyway. 
<laughs> and we won the May Sing. And not only that, we won the May Sing the following year. It was not really sissy stuff anymore. We were getting pretty heady about this. this <laughs> big time. That year, after we won the May Sing twice, pretty decided our we were so good that other people should hear it. So pretty, along with Grandmaster Tom McHugh, went into Toledo to talk to uh, a famous fraternity brother who was a captain of state from Indiana University some 20 years previous, Hoagie Carmichael. If you guys remember the name, pretty, uh, Hoagie Carmichael was a very famous singer, musician, piano player. Star of stage, screen, and radio. They went in and talked to uh, Hokie Carmichael's agent and told him what a great group we were. We are such fantastic singers. No longer sissy stuff, I tell you, it's big time stuff. <laughs> At any rate, we sang on the stage, led by Pretty Arthur, and we were big deals. Incidentally, at that time, fraternities were getting kind of a bad rap with their hazing activities. So what this has to do is, it was really a big deal. Here was a fraternity who was doing singing, things like that. They're not hazing their fraternity brothers. And it was good PR for not only Captain Sigma, but for all fraternities. About the year 1986, Epsilon Eta was 39 years old. Pretty decided that we should have a big 40th birthday party. And during those years, we had been returning to Cap to uh, Bowling Green. Oh, uh, not as a group, but uh, a once in a while type of thing. Pretty said at the time, you know, as the old story goes, the old guys have got their house paid for. Kids have left home, and the dog has died. <laughs> and they're ready for a good party time. So the first thing on Pretty's agenda was, where are we going to have this thing? We're going to have it the day before, homecoming on a Friday. But where should we hope? And Pretty said, as he always does, wouldn't it be great, standard phraseology, wouldn't it be great if we could have it at the Falcon's Nest? And for those of you who weren't here, the Falcon's Nest was just a neat student union, which is located where the present student union is. It was a small building, and uh, but it was adequate for the number of us who were here then. Pretty found out that the student union had been, the Falcon's Nest had been sold to a veterans group out in Portage. And when they bought it, they moved it in its entirety down to Portage. Pretty checked into this, and he found out that he could rent it. So we got these people, these veterans, into renting this thing to us for the weekend. And that was where it's going to be. Pretty started sending out letters to all the brothers. And this is primarily a 1946 to 50 thing he was trying to do. And every time you get a commitment from somebody who said, yeah, we'll be there, he sent out another mailing. Not only that, he said, wouldn't it be great we could get the old Captain State band together. <laughs> so he sent out tapes to all the members of the band in those days, and this was a small group of Victorian players within the fraternity. And uh, he told them on the tape what song we were going to play, what key we were going to play it in. And not only that, I want you to come back a day early, which we did to rehearse. And that was a real night to remember. Pretty saw to it that a video was made. Any of you people who have not seen the video, the 40th anniversary party, borrow it. It is a thing to remember. It really is. Uh, later on, a problem, a problem arose within the fraternity, and most of you know what happened. Due to a fraternity prank which turned, turned sour, the National was going to lift our, our charter. <coughs> And the fraternity at the uh, university one is kicked off campus. Pretty, along with brother Elmer Brown, pleaded with uh, Charlottesville not to raise our charter, pleaded with the university don't take us off campus. And as a result, Pretty was appointed assistant <coughs> alumni director, 
advisor. And with that authority, he uh, uh, formed a, an alumni board of control. Although we were in trouble at that time, uh, pretty soft to it that the entire process was over within a year, sanctions were removed, and Epsilon Eater was back on campus in the good graces of everybody. And those of you who played Captain Sigma during that period of time have uh, pretty earned in the fact for the fact that there was a fraternity of Captain Sigma on campus for you to play. Those of you who came back for the 35th, 45th reunion know that this was their largest return of any group to the, uh, to the university ever in the history of the university. <laughs> As you're here tonight, you know that this has to be the very, very greatest return of any group probably who will return to this university. Let me organize all this. You organize Friday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, we owe it all to Pretty Arthur. Today, Pretty plays in two big bands around Toledo. When he's home, when he travels in his van, he and Joe take their alumni directory with them and make it a point that every time they go to the city with the campus is living, they call him up and have dinner with him. Finally, Pretty really represents the epitome of Captain Six Brothers. There's nobody, nobody else other than our worthy grand founder, Elmer Brown, who has done more for Emperor and for <laughs> Wall of Fame. even better is that we, we, Joe and I, have four of our children with us tonight, and I'd like to introduce them to you, if you would let me. One is in in uh, Washington, D.C. He had a, another commitment. He's the senior vice president for Sally May. Could not be here. But he did send me a very nice note. But I'd like to introduce the other members of my family, our family. Sitting over here, our daughter Jennifer Arthur Meyer from Atlanta flew down up for the event. <laughs> David Prenti Arthur, if you will, from Party. <laughs> Matthew Kelly Arthur from St. Louis. And you must call him brother, Delta Delta, Florida, Campus Sigma. And our young daughter, youngest daughter, youngest child, from all the way from Tampa, Florida, Laura Stewart, Arthur Stewart. <laughs> 